Well, hallelujah and glory be to God. You are welcome. All of you who have joined us online, you are welcome. And it is my honor, singular honor, to welcome you to tonight's service. I'm always grateful to God for the opportunity he gives to present his word. I thank the leaders of the church and I thank everyone who has joined us. Tonight, I bring a word I have titled, Judah shall go up first. Judah shall go up first. A scripture reading will be from Judges chapter 1. Verse 1 and 2, Judges chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. We'll also read Judges chapter 20, verses 18. And then I will refer very briefly to Joshua chapter 6. Well, beloved, God is very interested and concerned with everything that happens with us. Every experience that we have, God is very interested in it. He's interested in the stories of our lives. He's interested in the victories that we win. He's interested in the difficulties we experience and the battles we fight. That is why he has given us all things. The Bible says that pertains to life and to godliness. It is God who has blessed us with everything we need to be able to go through life and to be successful at it, to be able to go through life and truly have a wonderful experience here on earth and in the life after. In our walk with God, our confidence is that God has won for us the victory. Our confidence is that God has conquered for us every battle. Our confidence is that the one who has walked this earth before, the one who created this world, he won the victory for us on the cross. That every struggle and every worries that we will ever face, everything that we will ever encounter according to his will and according to his purposes, we have already won. So that all we do is to equip ourselves to collect the victory. All we do in life and as we fellowship with God is to equip ourselves to be able to scoop the victory, to be able to claim the victory that God has already won for us. Now, when Israel came out of Egypt, one of the many things God had to teach them was how to equip themselves for war how to equip themselves to do battle. Now, this was very important because for hundreds of years, in fact, for 400 and for 30 years, all that Israel knew was how to be slaves. All that they knew was how to be conquered and not how to do the conquering themselves. So God had to teach them to be able to equip them to be for war. God had to teach them how to overcome an oppressor, how to win a battle. So God began with leadership and he began with Moses to carry the children of Israel through the wilderness and it took years of battles and years of, 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 of miracles and of different testimonies till they came finally to the place of the promised land. Now, I want to declare to you wherever you are that sometimes what you are going through may seem like it's taking a very long time. It may look like it's never going to happen. It may look like you are never going to arrive at your promised land. But I came to announce to you that you are coming out of that difficulty. You are soon coming out and you are about to get to the place where you will possess your promised land. Now, God is still in the business of getting people to possess their promised land. God is still in the business of getting men and women to the places of their promised influence. God is still in the business of getting us into our promised relationships. God is still in the business of getting us to our promised state of divine health. 
God is still in the business of getting us to the places of our overflow in life. And I decree and declare to you that before the end of this year, your crown for the end of this year will be prepared for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And tonight, I want to share with us one of the things that we would need to help us win before the end of this year. I want to share one of the things that could help us to win before this year ends. So the title of the message, as I have said, is Judah shall go up first. Judah shall go up first. Judges chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Now, it came about after the death of Joshua that the sons of Israel asked the Lord, who shall go up first for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Behold, I have given the land into his hands. Judges chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. I take it again. Now it came to pass after the death of Joshua that the sons of Israel asked the Lord, who shall go up first for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Judah shall go up first. Behold, I have given the land into his hands. So the children of Israel with Moses, they had to do a lot of battle. They had to fight in order to claim victory. And they had to be led by Moses. You recall in Exodus chapter 17, verse 8, reading downwards, where Moses' hand when he went on the mountain, whenever his hand is lifted up, the battle that was going on downstairs, down, down the mountain with Joshua involved, whenever the hands of Moses were lifted up, they were winning the battle. But whenever his hands came down, the people seemed to be losing the battle. So they had to keep up his hands in order that they will win the battle. They, they are victory was linked to Moses, the person of Moses. Because if Moses hadn't gone and he hadn't lifted up his hands, they may not have won the battle. So at the time in the life of Israel, their victories were linked to Moses. So the Bible says that Moses called the place Jehovah Nisi, meaning God my banner, or God my banner of victory, Jehovah Nisi. So the battles that Israel won when Moses was their leader, they won because their victories were linked to Moses. Moses passed and then there was Joshua. When Joshua came to the scene, he also led the people of God and they won many battles. Joshua would receive instructions from the Lord. And then when he obeyed those instructions, he would eventually win his battle. He, 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 according to Joshua, as long as he received an instruction from the Lord and he obeyed it, he was sure that he would get the victory. What had happened at another time was that these two personalities had died. They were not there. So, if you like, the children of Israel had been left alone. Moses was not there, and Joshua was not there. You will notice that however useful Moses was, however useful Joshua was, he was no longer there. And the children of Israel had to continue living their lives. The children of Israel had to continue possessing the land. So they were engaged in one fight after the other. So at this time, they went to ask God. 
as we are reading in Judges, Moses is no more, Joshua is no more. So the children of Israel go to ask God. If you like, now Moses is not there, Joshua is not there. And we have to fight. Their question is, God, who will lead us? Who will go up first to fight? God's response is that, in verse 2, God's response is that Judah shall go up first. Judah shall go up first. They are questioning who is going to go up first in this our battle against the Canaanites. This is in Judges chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. God's response to them when they ask who is going to go up first in this fight that we are about to engage in, God's response is that Judah shall go up first. But God did not end there. He continues to say that, indeed, I have delivered past things. I have delivered the land into his hand. I have given the land into his hands. Permit me to rephrase this. God is saying that I have given the land into his hands already. I have already delivered the, the land into his hands. Into whose hands? Judah. God says, when they ask him the question, who will go up in this fight? Who will go up first? God's response, Judah will go up first. Because I have already delivered the land into his hands. God says that he has already given to the children of Israel their victory. But it is in the hands of Judah. Now remember that Judah is already part of Israel. Judah is one of the 12 sons of Israel. So Judah is not a stranger. Judah is someone they have. It is Judah is someone they, 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 they possess. They have it already. There was no Moses. There was no Joshua. But God is telling them that at this time, for what you need to claim the victory that I have already won for you, I have already placed it in the hands of Judah. I want you to not forget this. Don't forget this. That God is saying that the victory that they want to, they want to have, the victory that Israel wants to have, he has already delivered it into the hands of Judah. Too many times we sit and wait for some particular person, some human being, to come and shake himself to give us the victory. But it is time for us to be, to be independent spiritually. It is time for us to stand on our own feet and claim the victory that God has already delivered into our hands. There are victories of all kinds. Victories in our health, victories in our finances, spiritual victories, physical victories. That Jesus' death on the cross already gave into our hands. But sometimes we just sit and wait for a human being, a person. But we must move away. We must stop being spiritually carried by Moses. We must stop being physically led by Joshua. Where he will fight for us. Moses, where he will talk to God for us. And come to another dimension where we engage God ourselves. We have to come to a place where we are not dependent on men of God, but we are connected and dependent on God alone. In Genesis chapter 29, verse 
31, we are on Judah and his matter. Because God says that the victory is so important. Lock it somewhere in your mind. That God says that the victory you need, the victory he has already delivered for you is in the hands of Judah. Now, in the account of Genesis chapter 29, 31 downwards, what we read is about Jacob's wife, Leah. The Bible says that she was unloved. She was unloved. But God enabled her to bear children. Now, among her children, among her sons, one of them was called Judah. Judah. So, in verse 35, in verse 35, in verse 35, we read that, and she conceived again, and she bore a son, and said, now I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah. Then she stopped bearing children for some time. What is important is the meaning of the name Judah there. It says that, and she conceived again and bore a son, and she said, Now I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. Hold on. Now, when Israel came to ask God in Judges chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, that they are about to go and do battle with the Canaanite. But who should go up first? God's answer, God's response is that Judah will go up first. In this particular battle strategy, the son of the tribe of Judah, or the sons of the tribe of Judah, they went out physically against the sons or against the Canaanite. The battle was fierce and all of that, but we want to glean some spiritual truth from the narrative, from the narrative. Now, as we have read in Genesis chapter 29 and verse 31, we see the meaning of the name Judah as praise. The meaning of the name Judah is praise. So Judah means praise. So I'm going to read Judges chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 again. And I will replace the word or the name Judah with praise. Judges chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Then will, sorry, now it came to pass, sorry, now it came about after the death of Joshua that the sons of Israel asked the Lord, who should go up first for us against the Canaanite to fight against them? The Lord said, the Lord said, praise shall go up first. Praise shall go up first. Why? Behold, I have given the land into his hands. And the his there is referring to Judah. So I can say that God is saying that praise shall go up first because indeed I have delivered the land into the hands of praise. Hallelujah. God has already given us the victory, but he has given us the victory wrapped up in our praise. So unless you praise and your praise unpacks your victory, you cannot experience the victory. Hallelujah. God has already given us the victory, but he says that he has given the victory into the hands of Judah, into the hands of praise. And that if we want to experience victory, Judah must go up first. Judah must not come after the battle. No, your praise must not come after the battle. Rather, your praise 
must go up first. Hallelujah. Beloved, your victory is wrapped up in your praise. Throughout the Bible, I have seen countless examples and countless evidence of the power of praise. It is when we offer unreserved praises to God that the blessings, that the breakthroughs, that the victories and the total liberties that God has given to us are handled in our hands. It is when we praise God, if you like, by heart, that the blessings that he has already released for us will be ours, will be right in our hands. God has won victories for us, but he has wrapped the victories in praise. He has wrapped your victory in your praise. Hallelujah. Doubt does not have the victory. Self-pity does not have the victory. Rationality does not have the victory. Complaining does not have the victory. Crying does not have the victory. What has the victory is praise. God has already given our victory into the hands of praise. And I declare to everyone under the sound of my voice that as you unpack your praise, as you pour it out as a sacrifice of thanksgiving, that God is going to birth for you that victory that he has already given to you. That he will make for you a level of victory, a level of praise, sorry, a level of, of breakthrough that is not attainable with human effort. That because you will offer to God your praise, that because you will pour it out onto his feet, because you will lift up your hands and praise the Lord and be grateful for what he has done for you, you will be able to unpack your victory. Hallelujah. Israel had to go into battle again. Not only this one. After this, Israel had to engage in another battle in Judges chapter 20 verse 18. Israel had to engage in another battle. Judges chapter 20 verse 18. The Bible says that the men of Israel arose and went up to Bethel and asked of God. And said, which of us shall take the lead in battle against the sons of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Don't think that this is the same battle. No, it is not the same battle. The first battle, they were going up against the Canaanites. The second battle, this one, they are going up against the sons of Benjamin. Now, if you take notice of the verse 18, the Bible said the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God to inquire great. This New King James Version replaces the name of the place they went to Bethel as the house of God. They went to the house of God. Why? Because Bethel, Bethel, means the house of the Lord. When the Bible says that they went up to Bethel, uh, it is because the Ark of Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant and the high priest, they were in Bethel. The Ark of the Covenant and then the high priest were in Bethel. The Ark of the Covenant represents the presence and the power of God the Ark of the Covenant, it represents the presence of God. And we know that wherever the presence of God is, his power is present. Then the high priest was also there. The high priest was the only one who was qualified to enter the Holy of Holies. If you like, he was the only person who was qualified to enter the presence of God. He was the only person who had the 100% clearance. To enter the presence of God. So when the Bible says that they went to Bethel, these guys want to be 100% sure that what we are about to ask God and the response he will give us is accurate. And when we ask God who should go and God says that Judah should go, we know that when we obey, we will win the victory. Now, 
it is important that these guys went to Bethel, like I'm saying, because they wanted to be sure once and for all that what they will hear from the high priest, what they will hear from God, once they put it into practice, once they put it into action, it will turn out the way God says it will turn out. So it is why they went to Bethel. I'm saying that Bethel is important because Bethel is where the Ark of the Covenant is and Bethel is where the high priest is. So the Ark of the Covenant representing the presence and the power of God, the high priest is the person who goes to God to talk to him. So they want to be sure that when we meet God, the response he gives us, we are going to obey it. And once we obey it, we want what God says will happen to happen. Now, the answer they got from God to their question again in Judges chapter 20 verse 18 was that Judah shall go first. Judah shall go first. Judah, they said, which of us shall go up first to battle against the children the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah first. And we have seen the meaning of Judah as praise. So that happened physically, but the spiritual understanding, the principle that God wants Israel and us to learn is that in any battle that we are engaged in, what should go first, what should go up first is praise. Hallelujah. Now, as you praise the Lord, as you unpack your praise, I see that God is going to elevate you. As you praise the Lord, I see God is making a way for you. That as you praise the Lord, I see you receive the promotion that you have earned, but it has been held up for some reason or the other. That as you praise, the testimony is taking shape. I know we are believing God for many things, and I'm telling you that those things are wrapped in your praise. That as long as you don't praise the Lord, those things will be, they, they will still be wrapped up waiting for you to praise but once praise goes up first what will come down is the victory that god has won for you i don't want you to feel hopeless i don't want you to feel helpless i don't want you to feel powerless i don't want you to feel that you cannot change the circumstances at all some of us are neck deep in certain challenges in this year very terrible difficulties and it looks like we are caught up and we can't do anything about it but I want to assure you that in the heat of your spiritual battles, you must learn to let your Judah go up first. You must learn to release your praises to God. It is when praises go forth, it is when your praise leads that victory follows. When praises lead or when praise leads, victory follows. You can write down that somewhere in your book that when praise leads, victory follows. All of us must be familiar with the event of Joshua chapter 6. All of us, I am sure we have heard that story from when we were in Sunday school. Joshua chapter 6. This is, it is the event of the destruction of the walls of, of Jericho. J Joshua chapter 6. And when you read Joshua chapter 6, the first thing that the Bible says was the city of Jericho was a fortified. Jericho is a fortified city. And the Bible says that it was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And we know that these walls, the walls of, of, these, of this city came down because of something. Jericho was a fortified city. It was not only a fortified city, but it had high walls. The walls were, were very thick and the walls were very high. The Bible says that they did not only have thick walls, sorry, yes, thick walls and high walls, but they also had, uh, they had gates. The gate of the city was tightly closed. The gate of the city was shut up. Nobody went out of the city and nobody came into the city. These walls, the Bible says that when the children of Israel lifted up a shout, 
when they lifted up a great shout, when they lifted up a great shout, on the seventh day when they walked around the city seven times, the walls came down. We know the story too well. But the word that is translated shout, the word translated shout means to make a joyful noise. To make a joyful noise. To make a joyful noise. Now we know that when the children of Israel were about to do this, they heard the sound of a trumpet. Now when the trumpet went off, the Bible says that they made a joyful noise. They shouted. They shouted. They praised the Lord. And it was in their shout. It was in their joyful noise unto the Lord that caused the walls of Jericho, a fortified city, a city whose gates were shut up to come down. And I want you to understand that there is a lot of power in your praise. And I, like I have said throughout the scripture, there are several examples of what mighty work was accomplished, what miracles were done once praises were offered. So it is in your offering of praise. It is in your praises. It is in that joyful noise that the walls of Jericho will come down in your life. And I don't want you to ever, ever, ever hold back your praise on any account. I want you to always be confident that once you lift up praises unto God, once you show your gratitude to God, what will happen for you is that the victory that God has won for you will unravel. Because he told the children of Israel in Judges chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, that he has given them the victory in verse 2. He says that he has given them the victory, but he has given the, the victory into the hands of praise, into the hands of Judah. Throughout this month, throughout this month, every single day of your life, I want you to have it in your mind that you owe God his praise. You owe God his thanksgiving and you must find a certain reason. You must lay your hand on something. You must identify something that has happened to you in the past. Something that is happening to you in the present or something that is about to happen to you in the future and gather it all as praise offering to God. And I want to assure you that as you gather those praises to God, he is going to cause every stumbling block, anything that has prevented you from making progress in the past to come down. Hallelujah. You will walk. The Bible says that when the walls came down, the children of Israel walked straight into the city. I asked myself that how is it that thick walls, eh? thick walls that surround a city, even these are our walls. If we shouted, if we did something that God says we should do and then it came down, is it our expectation that we will walk straight to Kotokraba? Or we will have to climb the rubble and, and, and then do some, and then climb over the, the iron rods before we get there? But the Bible says that when the walls came down, the children of Israel walked straight into the city. How did that happen? He, God caused the walls to fall off so flat the, the walls fell so flat that they were no longer a stumbling block for the children of Israel so much that they walked. Of course, they climbed over some rubble, but it was not a difficulty at all for them because praises had gone up. And I want to declare to you that as long as you do not hold back your praise, as, you, as we together praise the Lord this month, as we give him thanks for the year, as we bring an offering to God in this year, I want to declare to you that you will be walking straight into your breakthrough. You will be walking straight ahead to claim your victory. In this week, as you do not hold back your praise, even as you leave here, when we get to our homes, as we are leaving this place, we are going to hold praises in our tongues. We are going to release it on our lips. We are going to gather thanksgiving in our heart and offer it to God. And we will see the walls that have blocked us in the past, the walls that has prevented us from making progress in the past, all of it is going to be come down in the name of Jesus. You see, when we offer praises unto God, 
because he himself comes to inhabit the praise, nothing can harm us anymore. You can do all sorts of things, but it is your praise. The Bible says that he inhabits in the praise of his people. In other words, God dwells where praises are. Wherever there is praise, God dwells. In this week, as you offer praises to God in your homes, as you go out and you gather a praise offering in your hall, as you are seated and you are praising God in your heart and making music and melody to him, I see God make a, an offering and God is making a wall of fire. He is protecting you wherever you dwell. Another thing that happens when we offer God praise is an abundance of supply. God releases abundance, supply, and continuous provision once we offer him praise. And in this week, I want to declare to you that if you would not hold back your praise in this month, if you give God praises unreservedly, I see God causing a continuous supply to come to you. I see God making a way for you continuously and providing for you every single thing that you need. I know that some of us pray consistently and continuously concerning the peace of mind. What I want you to do is that in this month, take some time off and offer unto God the praises that you have. You may not have all that you need, but you are alive. And that alone is enough to praise God. What I'm telling you tonight is that as you offer God the praises of the things you see him do, he is able to cause the things that he has given to you that you do not see to also manifest in your life. The praises of God are like, they are like houses. They are like mansions that we build for God to come and dwell. The presence of the Lord is felt wherever his praises are. And so I pray for you that even as you pour forth your praises to God, even as you offer it all unto him at dawn, when you wake up in the morning, there is something in your heart, there is something on your lips, and all you say, oh Father, I thank you for another breath of life. I thank you for another time to be alive. All of a sudden, some power, some strength, you will feel that the presence of the Lord is clothing you so much so that what you used to fear in the past, you will no longer fear it in the name of Jesus. The power of God is manifest wherever his praises are. On Sunday, I shared with you from Acts that when Paul and Silas were caught up in a prison, they switched to offering praises and thanks to God. Once they did that, the presence of the Lord was present in the prison and the power of God was present. So wherever we offer God praises, his power manifests. His power is made manifest in every circumstance as long as we praise him. In this church, in the month of December, every year is a month of thanksgiving. What is possible is that that will become a routine. And you will think that, oh, this is a month of thanksgiving. a month of thanksgiving. God has done so much for us. God has made many, many, many ways for us. And so every time we must find a reason to praise his name. We must find a reason every day in our lives to bless his name. And I want to pray for you that before the end of this week, that God will inhabit in your praise. And I want you to intentionally praise God somewhere that people have said that, oh, it is a difficulty. It is difficult to do this kind of business in Cape Coast. In that business, I want you to thank God for it. There is something that has hit you very hard in this month or in this, in this year. I want you to, in that circumstance, baby, in this week, you are going to stand there and give him thanks. Maybe you will know someone who is experiencing some serious health challenge. In that health challenge, what you are going to do is praise God and say, Father, thank you for this. Thank you for this. I praise you that you are God over all things and over all situations, even this one also. And see how God will bring the liberty. See how God will bring the deliverance. See how God will make a way for you, even in this week, in the name of Jesus. You see, the awesome presence of God is present wherever his praises are. And so I want to impress it on your heart that as you leave here, 
as long as you want to enjoy the presence of God, have praise around. Don't let praise be far away from you. Let the praises that is due God always be present somewhere with you. It can be bubbling in your spirit. It can be in your heart. It can be in your mouth as music. You can write it down with a pen or something. But always find some reason to bless the name of the Lord. Amen. And I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus that as often as you praise the Lord, may his glory tabernacle over your life. As often as you bless his name, as often as you throw your hands up in the air to bless him, as often as you give him thanks, even on your knees and on your bed, wherever you are in the car, what I pray for you is that the glory of God shall be upon you, even in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Why don't you rise to your feet wherever you are as we offer to him the praise that is due him together, together, together. As we have gathered here together, we want to praise the name of the Lord. We want to give him the glory. We want to give him the praise that is due him in the name of Jesus. Why don't you lift your voice and praise God? Praise God. Some few weeks ago, people were terrified. People were worried about what was going to happen in our elections. But you and I are here today and we cannot even explain it. How is it that things are happening this way? How is it that everyone is calm? It is the blessing of the Lord. It is the peace of the Lord. The Bible says that it surpasses all understanding. Let's bless the Lord. Let's give him glory. Let's find a reason to thank God. Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and we give you the glory. We magnify you. You are high and you are lifted up. There is none like you, O oh God, in all the earth, among the gods, none compares with you. You are king of all kings and you are the Lord of all lords. We praise you. We magnify you. Even in the name of Jesus, receive the glory, receive the honor, receive the praise, O oh God. Even in the name of Jesus, take it from our hearts oh God look in our hearts as praise fills our hearts and father take all the glory and take all the praise we are also praying that as he receives the glory that as he receives the praise whatever must happen in our lives God himself is stepping in right now in Jesus name why don't you lift your voice and say heavenly father inhabit my praise inhabit my praise better now master danimu as i pour my praise to you may the wasia mbompede your presence your presence wo, wo, wo. you will come and inhabit in our praise you will come and dwell you will dwell you will dwell you will not visit and go back but you will dwell you will make a home in my praise in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, as we lift our hands to bless you, as we sing to bless you, as we shout to give you praise, and as we go down on our knees to bless your name, we are praying in the name of Jesus, make us your dwelling place, that any sickness in our bodies, any sickness in our bodies shall flee in the name of Jesus. Any difficulty in our business, as we praise you for our business, in Jesus' name, liberty and productivity will come to us in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise in Jesus. And why don't you praise God for Grace Temple? Praise God for the leadership, for Reverend Obing, for every single one of, of us who will come to mind. People we know, people we don't know. In this church, we are praising God on their behalf. We are praising God for those who are alive. We are praising God for those who are grieving, those who are making breakthroughs and those who are stagnant. Every situation, we are thanking God for it. We bless you almighty God we bless you almighty God we thank you we honor your name oh God who else is our sustainer you alone our our, our sustainer oh God you are our sustainer you are our sustainer oh God you are our provider and father continuously you provide for us we give you the glory and we give you praise we thank you for testimonies of people entering entering university in this year we thank you for the testimony of people even achieving other degrees in this place. We thank you for new birth. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for entrance of your word. We thank you in Jesus' name for healing, for deliverances. We thank you for miracles, for signs and wonders. We thank you in Jesus' name for making our lives, oh God, so pleasing in your sight. We thank you in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory and we give you honor, even in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Lift your hands as we worship the God together.
in Jesus' name. Yet I was young and father. Oh, yeah, share the grace with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness, mercy, follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.